Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Smells Like. I'm Josh. So good to see you finally with my top 10 men's designer fragrances for spring 2019. I know I promised a, a more scenic uh, view. Uh, the weather has, has, has not really been cooperating with me. I had a super nice day this week. Of course, I had to work. Uh, and today it's just, it's pretty gloomy, really wet. My backyard is like really muddy. Uh, but you know, do you really need me to sit in a, in a field of, of marigolds when I, while I tell you about my 10 designer fragrances for, you know, for spring? I don't know. Maybe you do. Uh, but you know, maybe next time. I, hey, I do have some flowers. How spring? Is that spring enough for you? Right? gonna have to do. Got my Coke Zero on deck, my energy juice. All right, let's dive right in. This is my designer list. Uh, before I jump into the list, I wanna talk about one honorable mention from Guerlain, from their Aqua Allegoria line, it's Herba Fresca. So this is a new acquisition of mine. I've had it for a couple of weeks. Um, I've really been enjoying getting to know this fragrance. It's based around mint. I decided not to put it on the list because I have another Guerlain fragrance. Actually, I have two other Guerlain fragrances on the list. And so I thought, maybe I'll just make this one an honorable mention. Also because I don't wear this one out very much. It has a really, really strong mint, like a spearmint gum kind of vibe to it. Um, but underneath that are some green, like fresh cut grass and some, and some light kind of watery florals. Um, really nice, but I mostly have been wearing this like at home after work, when I'm relaxing, uh, and before bed. I really do enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to getting into some of the other fragrances from this line, but I decided to make it uh, just an honorable mention this year, Herba Fresca, although it, I, it really is growing on me. The more I wear this, the more I, I really do enjoy it. Uh, so let's jump right in at number 10 from the house of Dunhill. Dunhill Icon, the original icon started the legendary Dunhill, which I think is legendary, Dunhill Icon line, or it's becoming legendary anyway. For me, it's okay, it's not legendary, but I like it. It's a good, it's a good line. Legendary wasn't the right word. Um, it's a good line. I, I think I'll always prefer the original. It's got this kind of peppered grape soda thing going on, which doesn't sound like the best thing ever, but it is, it really is good. Um, it's got a little bit of an eau de cologne thing and this kind of petty grain and citrus thing. There's quite a bit of woods in here as well. Um, it just is an interesting fragrance, you know, for a fragrance that can be had you know, really inexpensively, uh, especially, you know, online discounts and stuff for $30, $35. Um, and, and the bottle is cool. I like the whole line. It just is a really solid line uh, that can be had inexpensively. And the original is, it's so good. It kind of has a little bit of like an eau de cologne thing, um, kind of beef, beefed up with some spices, some pepper, uh, some woods, some musk. There's a really great musk note in here that I love. Uh, so it's Dunhill Icon at number 10. At number nine from Carolina Herrera. CH Men, you probably know about this one already. This is a little bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, so this is very sweet. It's sugary, sweet leather and green grass. That, that really is what makes this kind of a spring fragrance to me. More of a fun fragrance, you know, this isn't, this isn't serious perfume or anything, but it's a fun fragrance to wear. Um, and it gets a lot of compliments. It really, it really does. Uh, it, it is one of those fragrances that is kind of a crowd pleaser, sweet, green, and leathery fragrance. C.H. Men from Carolina. It is. At number eight from Prada, it's Prada Amber Pour Homme. This is really my my go-to Prada fragrance uh, when I want like a men's Prada. So that soapy Prada DNA. Uh, this is built around an amber cord, so it, you know it's got some some density to it, kind of like that dusty, ambery thing that you get from labdanum. Uh, there's resins. Uh, there's uh, patchouli in in this. There's some spices like cardamom and saffron. A really great saffron note kind of keeps it bitter and fresh while being spicy. Um, you know, all all kind of wrapped in that expensive soap thing that Prada has has perfected and, and, and does so well. Uh, I prefer this to Prada Loam personally. Um, 
and and also an undercurrent is that in this is a little bit of a fougere kind of barber shoppy fougere green uh just a little bit of a line that comes through here this fragrance that that's a little bit fougerish a little bit green uh that makes it really nice for work uh it it's a really interesting uh, fragrance there from prada uh at number eight that's prada amber pour homme at number seven from the house of Guillaume, it's L'Homme Ideal Cologne. So L'Homme Ideal Cologne takes the original EDT, which was based around uh, vanilla, tonka, uh, almond, and woods, uh, and this colognes it up. It lightens it up. It brightens it up with a bunch of citrus. You get a lot of lemon in here, uh, and really this is about lemon and almond. So it creates kind of a creamy lemon and almond fragrance over woods and over a little bit of tonka. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. I really like this on a warmer spring day or like a warm spring night. Um, and then I wear it a lot in the summer too. I'm like on spring evenings. I just feel like it's a, it's a fragrance that really works on kind of warm spring nights or, or summer evenings. Um, I think I wear it a little bit more in the summertime than I do in the spring. But like I said, on a warm spring evening, this one's going to get some love from me. Uh, from Guerlain, L'Homme Ideal Cologne. At number six from Mugliere, it's Alien Man, the Dark Horse release of last year. Uh, Alien Man is based around uh, cashmere woods, which is kind of that uh, blonde woods accord that is used in a lot of men's fragrances. This also has kind of a grape soda uh, thing. You know, I said Dunhill Icon has this kind of like peppered grape soda musk neroli thing going on uh alien man has more of like a woodsy grapey gray like if you had like gray grape soda because there's definitely a, there's kind of this gray thing going on in, in alien man um along with that kind of grapey thing and then there's also some kind of bitter green in this um that gray comes to mind because this reminds me of the smell of the original old nintendo games the ones that used to have to blow in the cartridges to make them work sometimes uh this there's a little something in this that reminds me of that i've said before this is like the alternative universe version of a, a popular mainstream men's cologne. Like if you made it to, you know, an alternate timeline of Earth or, some, you know, an alternate reality and went to their version of Macy's, I feel like this is what the popular men's cologne that they're selling would be. Um, and so, you know, it does have that kind of alien weirdness, uh, I think. And I think the bottle's kind of cool. I really enjoy wearing this. Like I said, it has the kind of, Blonde Woods, Grape Soda, Gray Nintendo games, kind of electric, uh, electricity, and and bitter green herbal, <laughs> which sounds like a total mess, and some think it is a mess, but I, I really love it. It was love at first sniff for me. I, I got a sample in the mail, smelled it, wore it, and ordered a bottle, and I've, I've, I've been loving this one. I really think it does work well in transition times like fall and spring. So at number five from Guerlain, this is the other mint fragrance from Guerlain that I wanted to talk about. I talked about uh, Herba Fresca at the beginning. Um, this is a much lighter, uh, less in your face mint. Uh, it's based around that that mojito vibe. So many, so many guys, anything that has like lime in it say, this one really has that, this one's great for that mojito vibe. <laughs> I don't, I don't think you know what a, what a mojito is, bro, but <laughs> everything, everything with lime in it doesn't smell like a mojito necessarily, but this one actually does. Uh, the original Guerlain Ohm was meant to be like a mojito, which a mojito is, I think, rum and mint and sugar and lime. Okay, it's a drink. Um, the original Guerlain Ohm was kind of meant to evoke that. Le Boise takes that original concept and really freshens it up, makes it more transparent, and really amps up the woods. Le Boise meaning like watery woods. And that really is what this is like. It's watery, transparent woods, lime, and mint. And it, it is so refreshing. Uh, it's very light and transparent, which makes it, I've really been enjoying wearing this to work. Um, 
This has a lot of isoe super in it, which reminds some people of Molecula One, which is all isoe super. It can be a little bit of a hide and seek player on, on your skin just because of that isoe super. Some people are, are not as sensitive to that, that fragrance. So I sometimes can't smell it and other people really do. Uh, but like I said, transparent, watery, woods, lime, and mint. Really just a great spring fragrance that I recently have really fallen in love with. All right, let's go to number four. This is my Chanel pick for this list. And I think this may, this may surprise some of you. Of all the Chanel fragrances uh, that I could pick to be like my, okay, this is the Chanel, designer Chanel, you know, or not exclusive Chanel that I wanna wear this spring. It's from the Allure line. It's from the Allure Homme Sport line. It's Allure Homme Sport Cologne. So I have really been enjoying this for spring. Allurum Sport Cologne was created and released at the same time that the modern Eau de Cologne from the exclusive Chanel exclusives, the, the Les Exclusives Eau de Cologne was created, the, the updated one, was created and released at the same time as Allure Ohm Sport. And, and they're kind of related. I feel like Jacques Poles kind of made a little bit of a designer version of the Eau de Cologne. So this is, it's an Eau de Cologne. It doesn't have anything to do with Allure Ohm Sport, I don't think. Um, it, it's woods, it's neroli, it's citrus. Um, and it's so good. It just, it's so transparent. It's, it's green. Uh, it's bright. I love Eau de Cologne. I love Neroli Portofino. I love Chanel Eau de Cologne. Um, and to have a Chanel quality Eau de Cologne kind of hiding in plain sight under the Allure Home Sport name, um, I feel like it's, it's maybe why this doesn't get a whole lot of attention, but it really should. I have been loving this. To me, for summer, or I mean for spring, I'd rather have Allure Home Sport cologne than Allure Home Sport. Um, I wear Allure Home Sport in the summer, like after I go to the gym or something like that. I like to wear Allure Home Sport in the summer. It just smells, it reminds me of the beach, but the cologne is, is spring all the way. Um, kind of recently discovered that this is an excellent eau de cologne. Uh, that, that really fits wearing in spring. All right, we're in the top three now. I've got, I've got three heavy hitters uh, to end this out. At number three is from Dior. You knew it would be in this. If you've ever seen any of my lists or, or know much about my taste, I've got to have Dior Ohm in here. Uh, Dior Ohm is, you know, one of the most interesting and, and game-changing men's fragrances ever, originally created by Jacques Poles. Um, I think that the reformulation, of course, done by Francois de uh, this has patchouli and vetiver and woods, but then it also has this great iris note, um, some citrus and things like that. It is just, it's the classiest, and, and most easy to wear uh, designer men's fragrance ever that doesn't smell like anything else, you know, that, that has a uniqueness to it. Super classy, works great for work. Um, this, this just, it fits spring. Of all the Dior own fragrances, um, I, I feel like this one really fits spring. I like to wear this in the spring and in the fall. Um, and it, it's just, it's a heavy hitter legend of a fragrance. It's one of the best, this is one of the best designer fragrances for men that was ever created. Dior Homme number three. At right, number two from Tom Ford. It's Grey Vetiver Eau de Parfum. Absolutely love this one. You know about this. This is just citrus vetiver and woods. That's all it is. Um, and it's done in a really kind of modern, kind of sleek way. Super fresh just super high quality. Um, it's got a grapefruit in it. It's, it's got kind of a, kind of almost like a fizzy vetiver. It's, it's, it's not quite grassy. Uh, it's a little bit soapy, but it's, it's almost like fizzy. Um, 
if, if that if that makes any sense kind of like a fizzy watery vetiver uh, with citrus and woods i have been using this a ton again another great fragrance for work this was on my uh, favorite work fragrances that i did uh, a couple weeks ago you can check out that video here um, and it, it just if it's work if it's spring you can dress it up um, really easily it really works well with a suit or or a little bit more dressed up kind of outfit I, I just have absolutely been loving that. As far as my kind of go-to vetiver fragrance of the moment, Chanel Sycamore is one. And then for my designer vetiver, I've been going with Grey Vetiver. So that leaves us at number one. Since you haven't seen it yet, you may be able to guess. It's from Hermes, Terre de Hermes, Eau de Toilette. That's the king of spring. You know that this has to be number one on my list. There isn't a better quintessential spring fragrance than Terre de Hermes, bitter orange, kind of dirty. This smells like a dirty orange, like an orange with dirt on it. It's basically what this smells like, uh, only in the best way. It's kind of, it's got orange and grapefruit. Um, it has this sort of earthy patchouli uh, in it, quite a bit of vetiver uh, and woods. It just, it's, it's classy, it's unique. It's really transparent, which is is what the perfumer uh, Jean Claude Alana was so known for. Was creating these these transparent, sort of airy, watery fragrances. Um, it's transparent while also having some, you know, some legs under it. Um, other versions of this fragrance are great too. The Pure Parfum is great. The Eau Fresh is great. The Intense Vetiver is great. But for me, for spring, I'm going with the original Eau de Toilette Terre de Mez every time, never go wrong with that one for spring. So that's my number one for spring this year. Tough one to dethrone when it comes to the best spring designer fragrance. This really, you know, this one just screams spring like no other. So, hey, that's my list for this year. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments uh, what your favorite spring fragrances are uh, for this year from the designer side of things. Stay tuned for my niche list. I've got a few niche and uh, designer exclusives uh, that I want to talk about uh, for spring as well. That'll be coming up here next on the Smells Like Fragrance channel. Thanks so much for watching.